This is the 2023 BMW M2, and that is the 2023 Porsche 718 Cayman GTS 4.0. Two modern day sports car greats. But which one's best? The rhetoric surrounding any and every new BMW today always begins with one thing, the design. And yes, I get that it's polarizing. In fact, BMWs ever since the Bangle era have had a really annoying habit, in my opinion at least, of coming out and being completely shocking and then mellowing over time until you look at it six, maybe 12 months after it's launched and you say, ah oh, yeah, that's a really good looking car. It's a very interesting thing that BMW has got going on. Now, compared to the super small Cayman, the M2 looks kind of big, but actually it's a really neat little package. You can think what you want about the BMW M2. I think it looks really nice. Take the front end as a good example of what I think is a really nice piece of design. It's a very angular front end. It's quite menacing, but the second you look past that, you get to these slightly smoothed out creases here. Of course, they're still angular, but there's a slight restraint. We get to these big shoulders over the front and rear wheels, which suggest the raw power, the mechanical power that sits beneath this car's body. It's a really nice exercise in design. It looked good when it came out and I think it's getting better. Compare that with the Cayman. This is the third generation Cayman. It's been around since 2016, but it looks pretty much identical to the second generation Cayman, which has been around since 2012. So what we're looking at is kind of an old design. That doesn't take away from the fact that it is a nice design, but I'm just saying We've seen it. We've had more than a decade with this body style of Cayman. The number 718 comes from the Porsche 718. It's a little hat tip to a very famous Porsche race car that won the Targa Florio in 1959 and in 1960. The Porsche 718 outmoved cars with far greater horsepower to take those two famous victories. And Porsche think the same can be said of this modern day Cayman. Well, let's see if that's the case. So then, come on, we've waited long enough. How does this Porsche 718 Cayman GTS 4 litre drive? Well, it may be somewhat predictable of me to say, but it handles remarkably well. It is one of, if not the most balanced chassis in any sports car on sale today. And of course, with that balance, comes the confidence to push. You really can push it. There is no point at which you think that the car cannot handle the power you're giving it, which is really remarkable because this is a very powerful car despite only having 394 horsepower. Of course, you have to remember that this car weighs just over 3,200 pounds. Giving it spectacular poise in the corners. Of course, being a mid-rear engine car, it has great, great balance as well. The GTS, or Gran Turismo Sport badge, can trace its roots back to the 1963 Porsche 904 GTS. That was a race car given just enough amenities that it could be driven on the road without driving everyone who was in it insane. And that, I think, is the spirit the Porsche have gone with this 718 Cayman GTS. There's no unnecessary touches, but every surface in this car is adorned with leather, carbon fiber, Alcantara suede, all of the plastics or a good quality, anodized metal touches everywhere. It's really nice in here. In terms of practicality, well, of course, it's a two-seater sports car with the engine at the back. So it isn't the most practical car in the world. That said, Porsche have done a great job of giving you as much cargo capacity as they possibly could. You got a good amount in the front. And actually, surprisingly, decent cubby size at the back. 
It is a great shame that the engine is so comprehensively covered in this car. You still hear it though. Borrowed actually from the GT4 though, it is detuned, producing 394 horsepower and 309 pound-feet of torque. In the GT4 it's 414 horsepower, so a 20 horsepower deficit. Not that you'd tell, because this car is electric. Not literally, that's coming. The electric Cayman is coming and it's something we should all be thinking about as we drive these great, great naturally aspirated models. But no, I mean electric in the sense that it drives spectacularly. The suspension is great, I have it in sport mode and it's just dancing right on the line between being woo, sports car firm but road car supple. It really is the gold standard of two-seater sports cars in its price range. Though so that does bring up a point that we have to make, and that is this. The Porsche GTS. Stickers a little over $90,000. This one we're testing here is over 110. By comparison, the M2 stickers are just $62,000, and the one we're driving, well, that only costs 66, so there is a void in price. Though, in putting together this comparison test, we decided to not let price affect how we marked these two cars, how we compared them. There is no doubt a point at which your skill and the mechanical grip and ingenuity of this car reach their limits, but I haven't found it. This second generation M2 borrows the S58 3 litre twin turbocharged inline 6 from the M3 and M4. In the M2, that motor is good for 453 horsepower, 406 pound feet of torque. So it's got quite a lot more than the Porsche, though it is carrying a bit of extra timber weighs in at just over 3,800 pounds. So the two kind of cancel each other out. A little bit more power, a little bit more weight, but it is no less captivating to drive, let me tell you. But it's got a devious side, this car. It's got just a little bit of extra. Something, something that just makes every movement just that bit more tenacious, dynamic, violent, I would say. Don't get me wrong, the BMW still feels nicely stable in the corners, great at high speeds, but it's just, I don't know, a tenth of a degree less balance, less poise than the Porsche. And there, in that little fine margin of operation, it's where the fun can be had. And so, I am pushing and pushing this M2, dancing on that line and having so much fun doing it. It's got bags and bags of character, this car. It sort of makes the Porsche feel ever so slightly sterile and sedentary, which is something you would not often say about a Porsche. Of course, the bar is so high with Porsche, it is a characterful car. It is playful. It does allow you to sit at the limit and execute fantastic driving. But this M2, albeit with a touch of chaos, just does that a little bit better. Just a little bit, but it's enough. The Porsche had a top speed of 182 miles per hour. The M2 is electronically limited to 155, unless you have the driver's package. Then you get 177 miles per hour. Either way, you're gonna have a mighty fun time getting up to that speed, let me tell you. Those who judged this comparison test said it is one of the hardest 
they've ever done in their careers as journalists. And I can see why. So we're talking about dynamic performance. We're talking about how these cars feel on the road and how they make us as drivers feel when we are driving them. And so with that, we're very pleased to say that the winner of this comparison test is the 2023 BMW M2. The Porsche is a phenomenal machine. Every time you slip down into that just right seat and bring the wheel close into your chest, the muscle memory comes flooding back. And you're reminded that these guys have been making the best sports cars on the planet for some seven decades. But the M2 evokes the spirit of BMWs from the glory days of the 80s and 90s. That intoxicating blend of power, performance, precision, with just a dash of unpredictability. It's been a long time since you were able to throw a standard M car into a corner with full gusto and know that you were going to come out of it the right side up. It is in death that we feel most alive, and it is at the ragged edge where the M2 was to life. <laughs>